grateful that all of you are here and that those on live stream have joined with us. It is truly good and pleasant for brethren to dwell together in unity. Amen. And uh, there's something about a uh, congregation of believers that makes you feel better. Amen. You notice that? We're in the Gospel of John. This, this will be our 19th exposition. We're going to be in the first chapter, the last two verses of the first chapter, in fact, verses 50 and 51. Now, after the beginning of Christ's ministry, which I started at his baptism, This is now another instance of him having a personal dialogue with people. Now this, there's some of this in Scripture, but it's, it's not as frequent as you might think. So far he's had a dialogue with John the Baptist, right? Where John said, I have need you baptized of thee, and so forth. He had a dialogue with Andrew and John but they wanted to see where he was staying, and with Peter, Andrew got Peter, he had to talk with him, Philip, and now Nathaniel. Personal dialogue between Jesus. You really want to see this. This is, this is in one way of speaking, a marvelous thing. Yeah. Personal dialogue mm -hmm. between the Lord Jesus Christ and people. Now, although Daniel appears on the surface to be the least important of the people so far, the more lengthy text is given to him. That's uh, interesting. Mm -hmm. John the Baptist was the greatest man born unto his time. Mm -hmm. Yet Peter's the one Jesus gave the keys to the kingdom to. Yeah. See, I'm showing you. <laughs> yeah. Jesus is running things. Amen. John was a disciple whom Jesus loved. Not a disciple, mm -hmm. the disciple. Didn't mean Jesus didn't love the other disciples, but they didn't love him like he loved John. Yeah, uh -huh. The disciple whom Jesus loved. Philip, he was the disciple Jesus asked, what are we going to do about feeding this multitude here? Mm -hmm. That was focused, that was, that was addressed to Philip. Mm -hmm. Maybe you've experienced Jesus asking you something that looked like it's impossible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you didn't know it was Jesus, too. Now we learn from this brief, these brief reviews that the true difference between people is not on the flesh and blood level. The difference is what Jesus says and says of the person and assesses of the person. That's the thing that makes the makes the difference. It's seen in the grace that's distributed to each person. That's what makes the difference. And there is a difference in the members of the body. There is a difference. They're not all an eye. Amen. Uh -huh. There are differences. But, but God has made the difference. Amen. They weren't born with these differences. Amen. Yeah. They're reborn yeah, amen. with these differences. Now, if you can receive it, and I think you can, the different graces that a person is given, people are given, matches their position in the body of Christ. That's what, that's what that's, Jesus makes differences on that basis. Yeah, amen. How they're going to minister in the body of Christ. They're members of a body. One person will be given insight, but the insight will match what mm -hmm. the position he's been put in. Opposed the apostle to the Gentiles. Well, he, was, mm -hmm. he was given grace to match that. And his function in ministry to the Gentiles was to give a reason for the Jews to get jealous. Mm -hmm. So you can imagine he's going to get a lot of, mm -hmm. a lot of things yeah. going to be given to him. Really yes. I'm glad you pointed out that the difference is made by God. That's a good point because mm -hmm. I know like, <coughs> if God wants an eye in the body, he doesn't look around and say, I need an eye. Hey, look, there's an eye. Yeah, it's an eye. He's like, 
You weren't an eye until God made you one. Yeah. That's right. That's a good thing to see. Yeah. We've mm -hmm. seen we've seen this to the measure among us, and as well as other places, that a person that looks like they're not adapted for astute presentations, verbal presentations. The world may have said that. Now there's a person working with his hands is what he's going to do. He's not going to be able to, you know, be intellectual or anything like that. <laughs> yeah, we've seen that that's an improper assessment of some people. They can work with their hands, they can sure work with their minds too. What's the difference? God was the difference. So there's a direct correlation with Christ's personal dealing with you and your role in the body of Christ. You are not, you are not like somebody who stands on your own. It's, Jesus is the only one that stands on his own. Everybody else stands in relation to the rest of the body. So Jesus is not just dispensing information. So this person knows this and this person knows that and so forth just so that people have more knowledge. If you'll peruse what Jesus taught the Twelve, it had to do with what they were going to do after he went back to heaven. Yeah. We're remarkable, remarkably seen in what he said. Just think of what he said the night of the Last Supper. John devotes 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, five chapters to what Jesus said. That's almost more than everything else he said recorded. But all, all of what he said to the disciples on the night of his betrayal, all of it had to do with what they were going to do after he left. That's what Jesus, 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 he does have a personal interest in you. He cares for the sheep. But that's not the circumference of his interest. His interests are much broader than that, and it's even broader than humanity. He's in the business of pleasing the Father Amen. over and above everything else. So here's how it goes. The fundamental thing is that God ends up pleased. Then that Christ is honored and served. Then that the body of Christ is served. Then. After that comes the rest of the rest of the stuff, so to speak. All right, let's look at this. Uh, Nathaniel is before Jesus, and Jesus is, uh, has told him. Well, he said, "You're you're an Israelite indeed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, there's no guile in you." Nathaniel knew that is what he was. Mm -hmm. He said, "Well, how did you? How did you know I was without guile?" He said, well, I saw you under the fig tree. Yeah. Yeah. Now, we don't know what was under the fig, what happened under the fig tree, but it was something uh, mm -hmm. significant. And Nathaniel says, oh, you're the Christ, you're the Son of God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We'll take it from there. Jesus answered and said unto him, because I said unto thee, I saw thee under the fig tree, believest thou? Thou shalt see greater things yeah. than these. He said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Hereafter ye shall see heaven open, and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. Amen. Amen. Oh, we're on to something really good here tonight, I don't mind telling you. So you're impressed, are you, with what God told you about you? You've seen nothing yet. That's way down to the bottom of the list. Yeah. There's something you need to know, but that, mm -hmm. that won't change you. Yeah. You won't be justified by what God's seen in you. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. You won't be saved by it. Mm -hmm. It won't make you what you should be just because he saw what was in you. That's just like to let you know who you're working with. Uh -huh. You're working with God. So you haven't seen anything yet, Nathaniel. 
Let's look at those first two words of our text. Jesus answered. To those two words. Jesus answered and said unto him. Now, 64 times in the gospel, these words are found. Jesus answered. See, some folk don't know that Jesus answers. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. 64 times Jesus answered. Now, by way of comparison, <laughs> 12 times from Genesis through Malachi, we read, the Lord answered. <laughs> A period of 2,500 years. No, a period of 4,000 years. Twelve times the Lord answered. Nineteen times we read, He answered. So I'm showing you the dialogue with men was not an everyday affair. The scriptures suggest to us that there's not frequent dialogue between God and those who are in, not in agreement with Him. You don't talk a lot. He did to, he did to Cain mm -hmm. one time. Amos said, how can two walk together except to be agreed? Now let me tell you something. If you want God to teach you, or you want Jesus to teach you, you'd better not be in a disagreement yeah. uh -huh. with what he says. Because at the point you disagree, the dialogue stops. Yeah. How can two walk together except they be agreed? Well, they can't. That's right. Well, physically maybe they can, but they'll end up fussing and fighting all along the way. Yeah. Now think about this. In the antediluvian world, the world before the flood, there were two men. During a period of 2,500 2, years, there were two men that are said to have walked with God in a period of 2,500 years. That's more time than has passed since Jesus was here. Two men walked with God. I'm showing you here now that Jesus answered both the dialogue. This was <laughs> quite a marvelous thing. When the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, Divine dialogue with men began to increase exponentially. All of a sudden, there's a lot of talk between God and man, particularly through the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, unfortunately, in our time, there's not a lot of speaking about a speaking Christ. There's not a lot said about a speaking Christ. Sometimes the last question people want answered is what did Jesus say about that? It's just, it's just unusual to have anybody say, what did Jesus say about that? Because I think you'll find at the root Jesus did say something about everything at its, uh -huh. at its root level. See Christ is a teacher. He's not well known today as a teacher or a communicator of truth. That is how he came to be known. All of a sudden, he came to be known as a teacher. He was called the teacher, the master, or the rabbi. You want to, when you're around Jesus, you learn something. Yeah, amen. It's the way it was. Some people don't believe that Jesus was a proper teacher. They don't believe that what he said is relevant today. Uh, I come from a major part of the group that I come from taught that, that what Jesus said was said under the law and is not relevant to us. I'm going to say that it's not possible for Jesus to say anything that's irrelevant. Amen. That's what I'm going to say. Uh -huh. yeah. I think I can support that, but I won't take the time to do it here. It's impossible for he who is the truth to say something that has now become obsolete. Yeah. Yeah. 
That's not, that's not even possible. See, when you hear someone's talk like that, you just like dismiss it. Throw it out. It's garbage. Throw it out. Just throw it out. Put it out of your mind. There's no place for a Savior who doesn't speak relevant things. Yes, Brother Jason. Let's, let's say that Jesus did speak under the law. Let's, I'm not saying that that's right. I'm saying, let's say that that, that he did. Mm -hmm. He would be the one who would give us the that's, proper that's view, exact. even yeah. of that. That's yeah. right. You're uh -huh. exactly right. You're mm -hmm. exactly right. Well, he did the first and second, first and second commandment. Uh -huh. Can you really understand the law and the prophets right. apart from Jesus? Very good. Yeah. Very good. Well, the Lord said himself, he says, my words are spirit and they are life. Yeah. Now, how is that irrelevant? Amen. Yeah, that's right. Mm. This sounds foolish to some, but it's what some of us have been exposed to that, yeah. that kind of teaching. There is a teaching in Christ, Ephesians 4, 20 and 21 talk about him. You have not so learned Christ, if so be that you have been taught by him. See, they weren't, gee, the Ephesians weren't taught by the flesh and blood Jesus when he was here. He didn't go to that part of the world. Mm -hmm. And then we know the Son of God is common, has given us an understanding. You see, Jesus is still a, yeah. a teacher, Amen. communicator. Now he says, Because I said unto thee, I saw thee under the fig tree, believest thou? Now there's, I wouldn't take this as a stern rebuke, although there was kind of, there is a kind of a note of rebuke there, but I wouldn't take this as a stern uh, the stern rebuke. But something's to be learned here. First, the weight of what moved us to believe. Mm -hmm. See, did you believe because I, is this, so you say, this is what, why I believe. The, the weight mm -hmm. of what moved you to believe is to be measured by Jesus, not you. Yeah. Uh -huh. In fact, it's very difficult, as the song says, when I first believed, it's very difficult to pinpoint when that was. Uh, but Jesus can. He can pin, don't you try and pinpoint, because I don't think it's pinpointable. <laughs> I don't know what you'd really gain by being able to do that. Some things that are astounding to men are really not that arresting. See, it was astounding. You, how did you, well, this was just this was something rather elementary to Jesus. Right. It wasn't like an epoch mm -hmm. to Jesus, mm -hmm. even though it surely was to, uh, to Nathaniel. <coughs> they're the kind of words that they are maybe arresting to the individual, but they don't bring justification. Mm -hmm. They don't bring sanctification. Mm -hmm. They don't bring separation from the world. They don't bring a new birth. See, that. They're not productive in that way. Uh -huh. They're just introducing you to God. You can't hide anything from God. You can't. Yeah, amen. Don't try. Uh -huh. <coughs> They're found in the declaration of the person and purpose of God Almighty as revealed in Christ. That's the thing mm -hmm. that must get our attention. The new birth and advancement of faith does not come from knowing who you are. It comes from knowing who Christ is. Yeah, amen. See, that's the thing that makes the makes the difference. That's what brings the hope of eternal life. All things pertaining to life and godliness are dispensed <clears throat> through or by means of the knowledge of Him. The Lord, that's the Him is the Lord Jesus Christ. Him that has called us to glory and virtue. And when you escape the pollutions of the world, it's not by coming to know who you are. Mm -hmm. That comes to know by the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus, knowing our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That's what facilitates the change. You do need to know yeah. Yeah. what's in you. Mm -hmm. But that's not the changing factor. Mm -hmm. The changing factor is when you know who Jesus is. Yeah what he's came to do, <clears throat> or has come to do. <clears throat> so Jesus says to Nicodemus, or Nathaniel, 
you're going to see greater things than these. You think that was something? You've not seen anything yet. You're going to see greater things. Even though that was uh, what he saw that was good and commendable, God and Israelite indeed, there's no guile in you. I saw you under the fig tree. If you're Nathaniel, that is something nobody else could say. Uh -huh. Nobody else could say that about Nathaniel. Yeah, yeah. But Jesus just kind of brushes it aside. So, well, we've got, to, we've got some greater things than that. You're going to see it's the same thing, same sort of thing Jesus said to the 70. He sent them out. Mm -hmm. He gave them power to cast out demons and heal the sick. They came back, boy. And they were doing probably what you'd do if you cast some demons out. Yeah. They came back and said, Master, boy, even the demons are subject to us. Mm -hmm. He says, don't rejoice in this. Yeah. Uh -huh. hmm? Don't rejoice in what you've been able to do. Yeah, amen. yeah I finally able to kick this habit. I didn't. Don't rejoice in this. Yeah. Don't rejoice in this. Mm -hmm. You'll fall if you do. The kingdom of God is set up so you don't rejoice in your successes. You don't rejoice in this. Yeah. See, but there are plans and uh -huh. programs that teach people to rejoice in what they've accomplished. Uh -huh. Oh, you've hit this new plateau. Uh -huh. You went now for a whole week uh -huh. without doing this or that. Uh -huh. Rejoice not in this. Yeah. That's what Jesus said. And Jesus was talking about something more than kicking a habit. That's right. yeah. He was talking about the powers of darkness doing what you said they should do. Get yeah. out. Yeah. Uh -huh. I give it a try, and you'll see that that's not all that easy, and some of them leave her very hard. Uh -huh. Don't rejoice in this. Yes. They weren't rejoicing in that God gave them the ability to do it. <laughs> they were rejoicing in that they could do yeah. it. Yeah. Then he tells them what to rejoice. Yes. Rejoice that your names are written in heaven. All right. Casting out demons, that's something you did. Uh -huh. Your name's written in heaven, that's something God did. Right. So you rejoice in what God did, uh -huh. not what he did through you, yeah. that's right. what he did for you. Amen. Amen. Go ahead. Any, any revelation of God about God? ourselves, I think it's meant to actually sober us enough to uh, to receive more of Him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. Amen. Brother Gibbon? Yes. I was also thinking along the same lines that whenever the Lord gives us the revelation of, of ourselves, mm -hmm. He will pair it with the revelation of Himself mm -hmm. so yeah, that there can be a measurement, mm -hmm. so that mm -hmm. there can be a comparison, mm -hmm. so that there can be mm -hmm. an yeah. understanding of Places that we might be lacking, yes. so that we can then aspire to His person. Amen. And if there are things that are blessings that are right. possessed, they're in, in order to take advantage of what uh -huh. what He has. Yes. I, I, don't, I don't know that you can really truly separate knowing the Lord and knowing yourself. I think uh -huh. one one follows the other. You you can't know yourself without knowing the no, Lord. No, I know Amen. that. I understand that. Yeah. But the secret is you don't rejoice in that. Uh -huh that part. You rejoice in the Lord. You're you're right. You only in his light you see light. Yeah. Yeah, that is true. You can't you can't discern yourself until you've been in Christ's presence and discerned something of him. And he said unto him, Verily, verily I say unto you. Now it's important to see that Jesus did respond to what Nathaniel said. He's not indifferent to our expressions. Yeah, not indifferent to them. He'll address them. We have to always make our expressions or utter our thoughts knowing where it's before Him. All the ways of a man are clean in his own eyes, Solomon said, but the Lord weighs the Spirit. So when you're talking, He's weighing them. He's not like diagnosing your word, your, your speech like a word merchant. He's diagnosing the Spirit that yeah. Provoke the word. And again, he said, uh, Every man, every way of man is right in his own eyes, but the Lord ponders the heart. See, so he looks down at the heart. 
Now concerning Nathaniel, the Lord's always already pondered his heart, mm -hmm. saw what's within. Even though that was a miraculous saying, it was really introductory. Mm -hmm. It was necessary, but it was introductory and elementary. Before you can know what God, what the Lord has does, done for you on your behalf, you've got to know that he, he knew you. Otherwise, how could you make an association with what's declared in the gospel if you haven't arrived at the same conclusion about you that the, that the law arrived at? See, truth is personalized. Truth isn't something that is abstract or impersonal. Something that's represented as truth, yet is essentially impersonal. Doesn't have anything to do with you or your thoughts or your living or anything. Is not to be trusted. Truth is, is, is personal. If the Son shall make you free, you'll be free indeed. For example, there are views of Christ's death and Christ's second coming that are impersonal. They're just theological views and persuasions. They don't really have anything to do with living. That's why people don't like to discuss. Yeah, uh -huh. They're pivotal issues, but the way they're, the way they're taught, yeah. they're like in the abstract. They're, they're depersonalized. So people don't pay much attention to them because they can't see a connection between that and living. But see, truth does have to do, Christ's death and resurrection do have to do with living. They're not just theoretic or philosophical. Anything that's purely theoretical or it's just a hypothesis posing a possibility, that's unprofitable. I mean, the, the, the thing that's said may actually be the truth, but it is delivered as though it was just an idea. Mm -hmm. yeah. That makes it, that depowers it. Because uh -huh. God doesn't, isn't just selling ideas. Yeah. Uh -huh. These are realities. Amen. The truth is personalized. He saith unto him. Mm -hmm. See, much of the failure for professing Christians to grow up into Christ and make some kind of spiritual advance is that their religion is largely theoretic or the theoretical. That's why. It's, it's not personal. It, it doesn't appear to be connected with the whoop and wharf of everyday life. Mm -hmm. But the truth does pertain to life. Amen. And he saith unto him, he saith to him. <clears throat> Twenty-five times it said of Jesus, he said to him. That's how personal Jesus is. See? Amen. 111 times it said of him, he said to them. 111 times. He, he just didn't like speak it out in the air and everybody do the best you can with it. Maybe someone will drop down in your territory. Jesus' words were always focused. Amen. He just didn't like to give a general speech. They were focused. His words were focused. He said unto him, <clears throat> he addressed specific people like Andrew, Peter, Philip, Nathaniel, his disciples, certain multitudes. He spoke specific words to Pharisees, specific words to Sadducees and scribes, see. He addressed his words. Sometimes they were sharp rebukes. Sometimes they were comforting. Sometimes they were challenging, but his words were focused. So at the point... You consider Christ's words impersonally. You've lost their utility. Their utility is that they are personal for you. Blessed are the meek. See, there they are. There's a specific. Blessed are they that hunger and thirst after righteousness. See, it's a, it's a focused word. Blessed are they that suffer for righteousness. See? He does that yeah. now, oh, and he can speak yeah. that, that 
blanket statement and be personally speaking. That's yeah. exactly right. Amen. Amen. And you, it comes home to you. It's, it's no, yeah. In the effect it has upon you, it's no different than if he preceded it with your name. Yeah. It's no different in its impact than if, than if he just says, Brother Tony Parker. Mm -hmm. uh, so, to the rest of us, it sounds like it was to us. But see, he yeah. can. that's what Jesus yeah. does. He, he focuses his word. To hear. <laughs> Amen. 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 Now he says, Verily, <clears throat> verily, verily. Yeah. That phrase is used 25 times in Scripture. Verily, verily. It's always, oh, Jesus is the only one that said that. Mm -hmm. No prophet ever said that. No apostle ever said that. No Pharisee ever said that. Nobody else ever said, Verily, verily. <laughs> it's exclusive, exclusive. Language going to Christ. Now, different versions say it different ways. Some versions read like, most assuredly, or truly, truly. You know, if he says, I tell you the truth. New Revised Standard says, verily, truly. Basic Bible English just says, truly. I assure you. Homan Bible. The Jewish Bible, yes, indeed. Do a version says, amen, amen. God's Word Bible says, I can guarantee this truth. I tell you, Montgomery writes, I tell you for certain, contemporary English Bible, International Standard Bible, truly, I tell you, I tell all of you with certainty. Amplified Bible says, I assure you most solemnly. Now, you'd think that it'd not be necessary for Jesus to speak in this manner. But it's because of the nature of humanity that he has to speak in this manner. It's like my mankind's a hard piece of wood that takes a couple of hard bangs on the nail to put it through there. See? Verily. Verily. Now the word verily is a translation of the Greek word amen, which is strongly amen. It's that word. And here's the uh, technical meaning of it. The repetition of the word amen, amen, is employed by John alone in his gospel 25 times. It has the force of a superlative, most assuredly, to emphasize that what is being said is a solemn declaration of what is true. Certainty. Now keep in mind what he's going to tell them. He's going to tell them for certain what he's going to see. Hmm, that's different now than if he announced something that he was good, that Jesus was going to himself personally accomplish. That's that's different. But this is something for sure. This is going to happen, Nicodemus. This is, this is going to happen for yeah. sure. Yeah, amen. Now only the Lord can speak with that kind of certainty. Mm -hmm. yeah. You can't. That's right. Maybe you'd like to. If you keep doing that, this is what well, you see. You you'd like to speak that way, but Jesus can speak that way. Amen. This for sure is going to happen. Mm -hmm. yeah. <clears throat> In fact, Jesus himself is called the Amen, yeah, amen. the faithful witness, Revelation 3.14. So he, he is an Amen. Yeah. 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 Whatever Jesus was sent to do, he'll do. Whatever he yeah. said he is, he'll, he, he is. Yeah. See, he is the final Amen. So these are words that issued forth from divine purpose. Mm -hmm. These words are taken from the tank of God's eternal purpose. Yeah. They are things that have been determined mm -hmm. yeah. by God. They're not like looking into the future and saying, yeah. this is what I see will happen. That's not what he's talking about. That's right. Verily, verily, I mean, this is what God's determined mm -hmm. <laughs> is going to happen. Verily, verily, I say unto you, I say unto you. 122 times Jesus is depicted as saying, I say unto you. Well, how's that for personal, huh? I say unto you. You'd be surprised how many folk would quit coming to church if they really were convinced that what was said was said unto them. Yeah. They'd, they'd just right. yeah. they'd drop off. They wouldn't come. This is the same one who brought the worlds into existence. Remember, he created the worlds by his word. Yeah. You've got to think, if I say unto you, with that context in mind, yeah. 
See, this is the one that his word created the worlds. Yeah. Let there be. Mm -hmm. Now he says, this is what, verily, verily, I say unto you. That's the same one saying that word. Yeah. He can, as the scriptures say, speak peace to his people and speak peace to the heathen. Mm -hmm. he just, just say it. Yeah. You can't accomplish things by just saying it. No. Amen. But he can, I say unto you. See, not only did he take on himself the form of a man mm -hmm. in order that he might die and put away sin, he took on himself the form of man to make God more perceptible mm -hmm. also. Yeah. He gave us a living example of what God is, yeah. how God thinks, how God talks, yeah. what God purposes. So he's the appointed vehicle through whom God himself is known. Amen. You can't learn about God by studying from nature. Mm -hmm. yeah. There's only two things that it testifies to, and men had to be told those. Yeah. His eternal power and Godhead. Mm -hmm. If you really want to know about God, it's got to come through Christ. Yeah. Can't even come by studying the Bible. Mm -hmm. I mean, intellectually, you, f you form some, but I mean to really know comes through God. Any other knowledge about God leaves God mysterious with his way in the sea and his path in the waters. Yeah, right. Now hereafter, verily, verily, this is very, verily. So this is what's going to happen. This is not what could happen. This is what was going to happen. Thereafter you shall see heaven open and the angels of God descending, ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. Yeah. You'll see this. <clears throat> Hereafter, other versions say, henceforth. After this. Several versions, and I like this, means from now on. Before this is over, the message Bible says. Most versions omit this word, hereafter. You omit it. It does, as I understand it, mean beginning now. From this point on, this is what you're going to see. He's telling Nathaniel that from now on, he will be seeing things transcendent to what was being told about him. He's going to see things that will testify who Jesus is and what he does. Yeah, yeah. This is the commencement of a new era. Mm -hmm. You're going to see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Now this is a reference to the dream Jacob had. Mm -hmm. As every Jew would be able to make this, this association. When he was fleeing from Esau... Jacob had this dream. He, heaven was open to him. He saw a ladder set up on earth. Mm -hmm. And the top of it reached up unto heaven. And angels were ascending and descending on this ladder. At the top of it, it was affirmed, Behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham, thy father, and the God of Isaac. And in thee and in thy seed shall all families of the earth be blessed. Now, Jesus is telling Nathaniel that right now, this dream is being fulfilled. It's starting now. Yeah. The ladder's been set up on earth. In fact, Jesus was the ladder. Yeah, amen. Amen. Set up on earth, it means it's the earth is now the locus or environment of divine activity. Yeah. Uh -huh. God's always worked in the earth. God's always managed the earth. But now he's working out his purpose yeah. in the earth. Yeah. A focused purpose with a divine representative. Yes, Brother Jason. Do you remember what Jacob called that place? Yeah. He called it Bethel. <laughs> yes, sir. Mm -hmm. House also of God. God. Yes, so sir. It's almost like the scripture saying Jesus is the house of God. That's mm -hmm. good. That's he's, the, he's where God is dwelling That's with right. us. In Amen. Christ. Amen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.
The holy angels are going to be involved in the work. See, but it's through the sun. Ascending, get some orders. Descending, fulfilling them. Ascending, get what the sun's supposed to say, bringing it down. Down. Ascending, getting some word to comfort Jesus, strengthen him into temptation. Descending, strengthen him into temptation. See, ascending, is at the garden of Gethsemane and need some strength. Descending, give him strength in the garden of Gethsemane. See, these. Jesus is the ladder. There's, heav there's, there's heavenly commerce is going on. There's activity going on through Jesus, to and from, to and from, to and from. The ladder set up on earth, that's where the work's being done on earth, it's being managed from heaven. <clears throat> now when it comes to discerning of what's happening, Nathaniel never actually saw those things happening. He saw Jesus like the next chapter. He saw Jesus turn water into wine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He saw it. He saw Jesus still the tempest, mm -hmm. still the waves, raging waves. He saw Jesus heal the lame, the blame, the lame, the, the mute, the mm -hmm. dumb, the lepers. He saw him raise the dead. Well, what was he actually seeing when he saw all that? He saw activity, yes, right. the angels ascending, the angels yeah. descending, yeah. working out. See, that's what he was really seeing. That's right. yeah. He was really seeing God working on earth yeah. Yeah. with the instrumentality of angels uh -huh. through Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. who came down to, you're going to see, this was, this was you're going to see. Don't be confused mm -hmm. by the sight. What you saw really wasn't just a multitude being fed with five loaves and two fishes. You saw the angels ascending and descending yeah. Yeah. on the Son of Man. Mm -hmm. Heaven was at work. The army of heaven was at work. Yeah. See, that's what you really saw. That's what was really happening. When Jesus was successful, that was what was really happening. He wasn't functioning independently of heaven. Because my father doeth the works. That's what he said when he worked to my father doing the works. Mm -hmm. I only say what my father told me to say. I only do what my father told me to do. See, that was controlled in heaven, yeah. worked out upon earth. Uh -huh. I'm sure Nathaniel eventually put it together. They would people would be beholding a means of communication set up on earth. The means of communication set up on earth. You say, well, what about Jesus went back to heaven, but he left his body here. He left his body here. And he's dwelling by faith in the members of his body. But it's heaven's running the show. You see this. Jesus said when he was with the people, he said, um, the kingdom of God has come to you. Rough translation, the ladder's been set yeah. up. He said to them, the kingdom of God has come nigh unto you. Rough translation, the ladder's been set up. And the angels are ascending. Uh -huh. There's a lot of stuff going on between heaven and earth. Amen. The people didn't believe they could. They couldn't make sense out of it all. See, to them it was just, it was just astounding that these things were happening. But see... What was happening was God was, God had found a person mm -hmm. through whom he could work without restriction. Yes. Like a ladder set up on. Amen. And this was what God was doing so that the promised Abraham to bless all families of the earth, this was how he was going to do it. Yeah. The army of heaven was being commanded. Now, during Christ's earthly ministry, he went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. Nobody ever interrupted him. No one ever caused the work to cease or altered what Jesus was going to do or changed where Jesus was going to do, where Jesus was going to go or changed what he was going to say. He was absolutely invincible. Satan couldn't do a thing in the world about what Jesus was doing, nor could all the demons on earth. They couldn't do a thing about it. Mm -hmm. See, Paul, he had to flee from his enemies. Yeah. Uh -huh. Jesus didn't. That's right. 
He didn't have to flee from his enemies. The demons cringed in the presence of Jesus. They knew what was going on. They knew this was a man from heaven. They knew it. They were afraid to oppose him. If the church ever really gets holy, it'll change how, how it's regarded in the world. The Sadducees, they were left speechless. They sent they tried to trap him in his speech and just yeah. <laughs> they had to go home and speechless. When he drove out the money changes and those that sold doves in the temple, nobody fought back. Mm -hmm. They didn't grab some thongs and weave some whips and fight back, did they? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <coughs> See the ladder was set up. Yeah. When the ladder was set up, the work is invincible. Yeah. All that remains is, are you involved in the work? That's the only thing that leads to be, that's the only question to be resolved. Have you received the kingdom of God as a little child? Those who saw the works of our blessed Lord were beholding the invasion, as Brother Jason calls it, the invasion of earth by heaven. Wasn't a thing, wasn't a thing they could do about it at all. They could talk against it. Refused to yield to it, but the stone just kept rolling. Just kept rolling, picking up more people. We've already, we've already picked up four or five people already. Yeah. Got to pick up some more. Going to keep on, and to this day, it's still rolling. Yeah. Stone is still rolling. There's already all those worldly empires that Daniel saw in Nebuchadnezzar's dream. They're all, they've all, they're all gone. Uh -huh. We've seen some kingdoms go away since since we've been alive. Why did they go away? Because democracy won out? No, oh, come on. The people need of God need to quit talking like that. Yeah. It's the kingdom of God that's, kingdom, that's yeah. moving forward, Amen. not democracy. That's right. Heaven says democracy? What's that? <laughs> no democracy up there, let me tell you. That's right. No democracy up there. Yeah. No one on earth or under the earth is able to move the ladder. <laughs> now our Lord has returned to heaven to carry out his rule. The ladder's still set up. And he's dwelling in his people, see? That's how the ministry now is coming through his people. He started out, but once he put sin away, see? Once he put sin away... And once he reconciled us to God, mm -hmm. now, now he can live in the people and work through the, mm -hmm. through the people. So you, you need to ask yourself, I mean, how much can God do through me? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'll tell you right up front, you had, don't have any idea how much he can do through you. Amen. I think it was Dwight L. Moody that said, the world has yet to see what God can do through a man that's fully committed to him. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's, it's how serious you are. Yeah. No limitations with God. Amen. So now the concentration's on the body of Christ. Yeah. That's where Jesus is putting his concentration on the body of Christ because that's going to be his bride. So he's working on that bride, and that's going to bring his sons home to glory. In the meantime, while he's doing that, they're the means he has for promulgating the gospel out into the world yeah. and making known the truth. And a church that does not faithfully promulgate the gospel of Christ uh -huh. is a disgrace to Jesus. Amen. That's right. There's no reason for him to continue. I'm serious, there's no reason for him to continue. When it says, let your light shine, doesn't say make your light shine. That's right. Keep the channel clear uh -huh. so the heavenly communication can keep. Yeah. The Lord will light your candle and then you'll, you'll shine. Yeah. So the disciples, they, uh, mm -hmm. they saw the work commence. They saw, after John the Baptist, they saw the ladder set up. Yes. <coughs> and Jesus told them, the kingdom of God is here now. Mm -hmm. It's here now. Receive the kingdom of God. Seek first the kingdom. Yes. See, seek this. 
Seek to be around this ladder. Be around this ladder. This is where the activity is, around this ladder. There's only one ladder. As I say, Jesus is the ladder. And uh, heavenly activity toward men has picked up since Jesus was here. It's picked up. It was never as voluminous as it is now. Even in Israel's heyday, it would, they had nothing compared to what we have in, in Christ Jesus. Insofar as abundance and content, it's not to be compared. It's not to be compared. Jesus is a prophet like unto Moses, but a whole lot greater. Hmm? Now you can see that, I'm sure, but not in that text. That, that concludes our introduction to the first chapter of John. Any of you have something you'd like to add? Yes, we're up. You know, when they were coming out of the Egypt there and they were in the desert, he, uh, David is commenting on this in Psalm 78, and he says, Yea, they turned back and tempted God and limited yeah, the, holy the Holy One, one of Israel. And it goes on to, to say that the, he had done so many things. He had done all the miracles in Egypt. He had done so many things to prove to them that he was able to, to deliver. And yet when they got in the wilderness, they tempted him. Yeah. And, and, and they limited. Now they that's limited. amazing. But see, in Christ, a person can limit Christ by their... Uh, by their um, commitment to him they, yeah. they can limit their expression and then what they can get from Christ is because they don't believe him yeah so Jason yeah yeah this this is interesting that this statement here to, to Nathaniel you'll see heaven open the angels of God ascending and descending upon the son of man that happened at the very beginning of his ministry <laughs> That's right amen at the end though when the disciples and Jesus were all together there at the Last Supper before Jesus was arrested, remember Prince Philip. Of the world comes. Well, remember Philip said, show us the Father and that will suffice. Mm -hmm. And Jesus said, Philip, don't you know me? Anyone who's seen me That's right. has seen That's the Father. Right. And then he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Yeah. No one comes to the Father except through me. That's just another way of saying exactly what he said here. Amen. To Amen. Nathaniel at the beginning, at the beginning of his ministry. And I also had a thought on this matter of truth. In Scripture, truth always has something to do with God. Truth is not yeah. something yeah. independent mm -hmm. from God. So truth truth is the way God is, his character, yeah. or it's something yeah. God says, yeah. his word. So when, or something that's in harmony with God yeah. is true. Now, when we said when we say that Jesus is the truth, it's like truth became accessible. Amen. Yeah, amen. Uh -huh. he, he's a person. That's see? He's, good. A, he's, he's like a, he was likened, made like unto us. See, mm -hmm. to make to make truth accessible, so you can know God. Uh -huh. By amen. knowing the Son of God. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yes, sister Melissa. Uh, it just came more clear to me whenever you were speaking about he saith unto him um, this this power that Jesus has of speaking. <laughs> so I thought about, you know, when you, you said he said, let there be light. And I thought, you know, really, I hadn't really seen it so clear like when he says, let peace be unto you. Yes, I mean, right. he can just speak that. <laughs> and it really happens. I mean, you can... Yeah. And so I thought, you know, just the creating of the of the creation was like an exhibition of his power, mm -hmm. his Amen. ability. Mm -hmm. Like him saying, I am your strong tower. Uh -huh. I can do whatever I say. That's uh -huh. right. Amen. <laughs> Pretty amazing. <laughs> Amen. Yes, we Jesus here connects himself with the Jacob's ladder. Another time he had connected himself with the manna. He says, I'm the true bread. And, serpent. Yeah, and, and also Moses and lifting up the serpent. <laughs> mm -hmm. And there's probably others that I'm not thinking of, but Jesus said, It is they which testify of me. Mm -hmm. And here he's giving examples. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 This access is yeah. wonderful. Brother Justin. I just had a really good thought that, that why do we have ladders to begin with? It's yeah. always to access something. That's right. <laughs> uh -huh. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's an amazing parallel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. They fell the way out of a pit, too. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. This ladder is not is, is primarily for him to come down to us, though. Yeah. And he does bring us up. Yeah. But, yeah. but he came down the ladder himself. Yeah. That's yeah. right. <coughs> Went up the ladder. The angel's coming down, going back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Eventually, I think we can say eventually we'll, yeah. Amen. we'll take the ladder. Yeah. 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 Rise to be with him. Yeah. 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 All right, let's have a word of prayer then. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank Thee for the uh, abundance that's made known in the gospel itself. That's just John's gospel here. Right? It's so wonderful to read of the uh, communication of heaven to earth and the provision for those on earth to receive resources from heaven and the management of your, your work from heaven. Help us never to lose this view, Father. In Jesus' name, amen.